I'll tell you what it takes. It takes you and I to understand the simple thing I'm talking about. That you cannot, cannot, I'm going to be dramatic, cannot, cannot, cannot be a Christian for your sake. If you're a Christian for your sake, your Christianity will be dull, up and down, cycling. You have dark seasons. If your Christianity is all about you, Witness. you will never say it was really a blessing in the long run. Because it has nothing to do with Christianity. Christianity is for his great name. It's for his great name. That's why I'm alone praying and don't want to ever give myself to offense. It's for his great name. That's why unforgiveness isn't an option. It's for his great name. That's why I'm going to grow in mercy. It's for his great name. That's why what you see is what you get. It's for his great name. That's why there's no closets or secrets. It's for his great name. And man, if we get that, we're going to walk in something that's always been there. It's been rarely seen, but it's always been there. The privilege to walk in love was there every day you've woke up your whole life. And you're waiting to be loved. And he's waiting for you to love. Wow. <laughs> you're waiting to be done right. He's waiting for you to do right. Ooh. You're waiting for a fair shake. And he's saying, I already gave it to you. <laughs> when you were yet a sinner, I sent my son to snatch you out of darkness and translate you into the kingdom. In my love. Yeah? yeah. It's a simple gospel, guys. I came to cheer you on in it. I just flew here. I, I just came to preach the gospel. He gave me like, I'm doing something this afternoon. It's going to be my sixth time in front of folks. It's going to be fun. Amen. It went so fast, though. But guys, this is all I ever have to say. This stuff right here. Amen. Like every time I stand in front of people, I get a, it's like a mandate. I get consumed by it. I'm not, I'm not here to, to get you all. I'm here to say, man, what are we thinking? What are we doing? Why are we living? Who are we now that he came? And we got to get real with that. So we do justice to one another in him. And we do justice to his great name. So that actually it's not an embarrassing thing to say you're a Christian. That we don't have to come up with secret agent terms. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look, Christian's very simple. They were first named Christians there in Antioch. And it just meant simply little Christ-like ones. So they were given the name. Wow, you look like him. You know what that turned into over the generations? Do something for me. Bless me. Find me a great spouse. Give me a better job. And make sure bad things don't happen. And sometimes the only contact people have with God is the list of the things they need him to do. And they call it prayer. It's communion. It's fellowship with Holy Spirit. You're one with him. Holy Spirit's going to show you those things. He's not going to speak of his own authority, but only that which he hears. That means he's going to speak to you. Don't get complicated with this. Don't listen to somebody that says God's not speaking today. My goodness, his word is speaking loud. But Jesus said, and he's not a liar. Jesus said, Holy Spirit will speak to you. Yeah, come on. And he's not going to speak on his own authority and just hold his own conversation. He's going to speak that which he hears. He's going to always be in agreement with the Father. So when he speaks, it's what God said. Yeah? Yeah. So I expect Holy Spirit in my life to speak. Yeah? So if he's going to speak to me, and I'm not going to talk back, <laughs> ignoring him, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> If your spouse always talked to you and you didn't talk back or vice versa, something probably wouldn't work out good in the long run. <laughs> so if he's going to speak to me, I'm real quick to speak to him, man. I probably initiated a lot more. <laughs> I'd probably tell him he's awesome a lot. 
that he's the best friend of my life, that the wisdom you possess is beyond measure. And thank you for pouring it into my heart. Keep fashioning me and mold me and shape me into everything Jesus' blood has paid for. I want to be a finished work. Yeah. In my life, I want to walk in what was possible, God. Not just in signs and wonders and miracles, yes. in nature, in conduct, <laughs> in just life. I want to be what you would be if you walked in my shoes. Listen, I don't want to teach myself, and I'm not being mean. Hear me out. Hear my heart. Can you tell I don't have no intention to be mean to anybody? I don't want to teach myself to come to a setting like this and appear to be pursuing something and not deal with my own heart in those things. I don't want to leave here and think nothing of animosity in the car with my family. I don't want to leave here and think nothing of control and manipulation within my family. I want to be a blessing and an asset. I want to be approachable. I want people to feel safe around me. I want people to know him because they've been around me. And I'm telling you, you can let that burn in you through prayer. You can ask Holy Spirit to make that so alive in you. You can ask him to just burn your heart with the passion of walking in love. And help you to see everything that's not that. Yeah? Okay. You can pray like that and you can show God your heart. You can show your own conscience your heart because he knows your heart. But it's just good for you to know you're in that place. Because if you have a clear conscience, if your heart doesn't condemn you, you have confidence before God and you know whatever you're asking, it's happening. Yeah? yeah. Okay. But if you violate your conscience... There's some Paul wrote about violated your conscience. They shipwrecked their faith. Yeah. Come on, you can shipwreck your faith and stay a part of the church. Yeah. You can shipwreck your faith and go to all night worship. Yeah. You can shipwreck your faith and wave a flag. Wow. And you can let the things you do in his name take the place of knowing him and walking clear. Yeah. Don't ever teach yourself religion. Yeah. Don't ever teach yourself to come to a setting like this and not be sincere with what he's done. It's dangerous. My pastor, he's never liked me saying this, but I still say it. Not to dishonor him because I'm convicted. He's always said, I don't know about that because we're always trying to get people to church. <laughs> we think getting to church is the goal. Oh, they're coming to church. <laughs> Spouse, you know, he's living all. He's like, he don't even know God, but he comes to church. Wife says, at least he's coming to church. And I'm not against positive and speaking life and faith, but we think church is the end result. Hey, if they're coming to church, everything's great. I've always said this, when you go to church, if you've never been to church and you go to church and you start going to the most pivotal, maybe the most dangerous, vulnerable point in your life because you either learn religion him or you learn some of each and take 20 years to work that out. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's a very important thing. When you go to church, it's no small decision because you're going to... For him, you're saying you're going because you want to be more mindful of God. You want to pay respects to God. You want to, pay, but but when you hear these kind of messages, you, you, it's very. When you come to settings like this and hear these things, it's very pivotal. What might be the most dangerous? I'm not sure Satan cares about us coming to church. I'm not sure in a lot of cases he doesn't inspire it. Oh. I've believed this for years. I don't talk about it much, but I've believed it for years. Because he inspires it because he's not threatened by our gatherings because Come what on. people learn is a form Come on. without a lust. Come on. They learn knowledge Amen. without love. Amen. So the knowledge puffs them up instead of the love edifying. Yeah. And all of a sudden the church attendance itself becomes their identity yep. wow. instead of Christ in me, the hope of glory. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yes. Boy, this is a serious big deal. Man, let's be sincere and, and ch check in on what's making me tick. Amen. Why do I go there? Why did I show up this morning? Where's my life with God? What am I really pursuing? And I'm telling you, if your answer isn't to become love and isn't to walk in his image and follow him the best that grace allows, then we're on a wrong journey. I said it yesterday in one of the services. <laughs> I said the finished work of Christ and the cross of Christ is not paid in full when a man prays a prayer to get his name in a book called life. 
The finished work of Christ is paid in full when his nature is transformed back to what God created. When he puts off the old and he puts on half. That's when the dividends of the investment of the blood of Jesus are paid back full to Almighty God. So he's an amazing investor. He invested the blood of his son Jesus into the earth for the dividends of one seed. Many seeds, yeah. many sons after its own kind, yeah. right? Yeah. So I shared this yesterday. I think it was yesterday here morning or afternoon. So the glory of his inheritance, it's the hope of his calling, not your calling, yeah. the hope of his calling, yeah. right? The glory of it's his exceeded his power in who we believe it's the glory of his inheritance in the saints. He's not talking about what you get from him. He's talking about what he gets through you being transformed. It's his inheritance. He inherited the redemption of our lives through the blood of Jesus. We're considered and called the purchased possession. He says your life is not your own. Why? You've been bought with a price. What price? Same price. On every head. The blood. Of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's a big deal. So we either believe that and we begin to submit to that and show our belief by the way we live and respond, or we just get doctrinal and theological and decide, well, I don't know if I totally don't believe all that. You know what I think? I believe the scripture mean and I believe look, you can talk the Bible the rest of your life and never know God. That's right. The Bible isn't here to be debated. Amen. It's the word becoming flesh. Yes. It's, it's not to sit over coffee and debate your differences in doctrinal beliefs. So so Men good. have done that for generations. They just sit and they talk about the Bible and they feel spiritual because they're talking about the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> but then they're talking down their spouse. So they got anger in their heart and frustration with no conviction. Wow. wow. Are you guys good? Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're good. Okay. This is good news. Yeah. Yeah. 